Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Friday afternoon. Merry Christmas to everyone and your families. Hope you are surviving and staying warm with the Siberian Express that has rolled through North America and the United States all the way into the deep south where we are into North Georgia. It is a bone chilling cold here. It got down, it hit here around 3 a.m., took our power out for about two hours. Uh, but uh, was restored, and thankfully since then we haven't had an issue with power so far. But I know many of you are probably having issues, depending on your location. Share how that's going and uh, what you're experiencing. <clears throat> I took Teddy out for a walk a while ago, and I tell you what, that that I haven't, I haven't felt that kind of cold in quite a while, not since my younger years where I spent some time in the mountains of uh, North Georgia here. So... Uh, stay warm. Uh, I'm going to talk about how if you live long, in my opinion, and, and some others, you know, share this, but uh, if you live long enough, you will most likely experience persecution for your beliefs. I'm going to get into that more detail, but first, Ms. Dog and I made a run to Kroger last night to grab some last minute stuff. And uh, for all the meal, you know, the meal for uh, for Christmas and all that, we have the company coming over, and some some observations with prices. I mean, seems like there's no item under five dollars now. You know, uh, it don't matter what you pick up, whether it's eggs, bread, milk, uh, it's just anything, just about, except for your cheapest canned item, maybe, uh, but about five bucks and up. And that's unreal, isn't it? I mean, think about even two years ago. You wouldn't have, it would have been unthinkable. Uh, that's one thing we noticed. Uh, the other one is uh, just some casual observations. We were going through uh, the pet food aisle and looking for some toys for the doggies. Uh, yesterday was Ella's birthday. She is five years old. But anyway, we noticed the young lady picking up like a cartload of toys, treats, pet treats and all that, speculating maybe she was taking them to a animal shelter possibly. Um, we also went by a section, you know, where they have the closeouts, like the sale items that are a little special, you know, that are, um, it, the section gets smaller and smaller to where, uh, you know, little cheaper items that are on a closeout or whatever get discontinued, you know. And there was a couple, a uh, young couple standing there. They looked, they looked a little, you know, they didn't look well to do, put it that way. But, uh, but they just looked staring at it. They just stared at it. I don't think much was in their cart, just kind of looking dejected. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see that grow, unfortunately, the way things are going. But anyway, those are just some things that we noticed. Um, so a couple of stories that I ran across, I mean, this is disturbing. Uh, first story, a young lady out of the UK, now I forget which part of the United Kingdom this was, but she was basically, she was arrested. <laughs> she was arrested for basically praying. Uh, she was standing across the street from an abortion clinic. She didn't, she was by herself. She was peaceful. There was a little clip about it you know, that, uh, that I watched, but. She didn't have a group with her. She didn't have signs. She wasn't yelling, screaming with a bullhorn. She wasn't harassing anybody. Uh, but she was just standing there peacefully, quietly praying. And cops come up on her and give her a warning, say, if you don't leave, you go, we're going to arrest you. And she questioned why. They gave some lame answer. Uh, and then they told her again, if you don't step with us and step away, we're going to arrest you. She said, well, I guess that's going to have to happen then because I'm not going anywhere. So they arrested her. She she didn't resist. She, you know, she went peacefully, but that, you know, I mean, think about that, you know, very disturbing in my opinion. You know, what's next? You know, what's next down that slope? The other one, was here in the United States, Loudoun County, Loudoun County School Board meeting in Virginia. 
hundreds, hundreds of people have signed a petition to ban hate speech. What's the hate speech, you say, you ask? Well, quoting from the Bible is hate speech, according to these folks. There was a citizen who uh, stood up and aired a grievance with the school board, quoted the Bible in his public comments in criticizing the board for supporting teaching children. Uh, ooh, how can I word this? Um, basically immoral behavior uh, that has to do with um, maybe, let's say, gender studies. Um, but anyway, he and some other parents were demanding uh, members of this board resign for this policy. And uh, this guy was the, was really the one who was was speaking speaking out. And uh, and uh, he's you know he he accused the board of promoting this board of uh, school board of promoting immoral behavior that was against God's design and natural order. It's against Jesus's teachings, you know, where he said, where Jesus says, do not lead children astray, basically, you know, paraphrasing, uh, with a moral behavior, you know, get back to reading, writing, and arith arithmetic the way it should be in school. Teach them what, you know, history, math, you know, the things we learn in school, hello, you know, he's, how about get back to that, you know, and uh, stop the, uh, the culture war stuff. I mean, it's insane. So he was speaking out against that. So as a result, uh, a 19 year, 19 year old community organizer started a petition to ban hate speech at future school board meetings. First of all, what is a community organizer? I don't know, can somebody tell me what a community organizer is? I've heard that before. Probably a whole lot of nothing is what I think. But anyway, so this kid gets this going. He's got 873 signatures. Now that's frightening. Okay, you've, you've got close to a thousand people in this community signing on saying that this guy committed hate speech by referencing the Bible. Let's think about that for a minute. They don't want you to quote the Bible. They want to muzzle you. They don't want you to pray, especially out in public. They don't want you to pray, period. They don't want you to be able to express your opinions. that differs with theirs. See the trend? It's been going on a while. People need to wake up to it. Quoting the Bible, or even paraphrasing it, and pray. Don't do that. Like I said, they want to shut you up. They want to marginalize you, dehumanize you, cancel you. Now this guy that spoke out and referenced Jesus's teachings, he's getting threats in the community and they're trying to hurt his business. Marginalize, dehumanize, cancel you, and then they'll persecute you. That's next. There's a path. This goes down. This is history. This is what's. This is what happens. I've seen it before. You'll see it again. And you're like, dog. Well, that's not going to happen here in the United States. We have First Amendment, Second Amendment. You don't think it will? Think again. Think again. You need to stand firm. Wake up. I'm like that lady in the UK. You just have to arrest me. Now, you can debate the issue all you want. Uh, and you can. My, my problem is that you have the right to air a grievance, a redress of grievance. You, know, you, have, the, you have that right, but they don't want to hear it. So they're going to label you, categorize you, marginalize you. Like I said, wake up. We better wake up. But 
And, you know, some people could say, well, that's strong to say persecute. Well, all persecutions start out similarly to this. There's steps to it. And we're heading down that path is my, my concern. Even here, even here in this country. Again, if you'd have heard a story like this, maybe even just a couple of years ago, it would have been unthinkable. Unthinkable. But now, a little more common, y'all. A little more common. So just pointing these things out, don't want to scare people. So as a result, I will have two uplifting passages to share with you. First one is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 through 9 says, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son, into the world that we might live through him. Amen. Amen. What a definition. Other one is Isaiah from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 says, this is one of my favorites, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Amen. It's uplifting just to read that, y'all. I mean, it is for me. I hope it is for you guys. But let's keep those in mind. Let's stay uh, positive and be the example, be the bigger people. However, stand firm to your convictions, to your faith. You're going to have to make a decision one day. You're going to be put in that, you may be. I mean, you probably will be uh, put in that position of well, which way do you go? You know, I know where I'm going. Hey, and whatever, the chips will fall where they may. Let, let them fall, you know. Anyway, share your thoughts. Stay aware. Be safe out there. God bless you. I'll see you soon.